اهلا وسهلا اصدقائيه اسمي بروك واليوم سا اف كيك دميه جديده من الشرق الاوسط و انا متحمس لان ادرس اللغه العربيه سنتين في جامعه ف ماشي Hey everyone, it's me, X Kind of Dances, and today I'm going to be opening a new doll from the Middle East. I'm really excited about this because I studied Arabic for two years in college, and I am really interested in dolls in general, doll history, and this is actually a really interesting piece of doll history, and the company that makes this doll especially, not specifically this doll, but definitely the company behind them. Um, and yeah, I've been really interested in the Fula dolls made by... The company new boy i haven't picked any up yet because there's some specific ones that i'm looking at that i haven't found at a price that i'm willing to pay just yet but um the we'll see about more but um inside of this box is a really really cool treasure so this is oh my headphone fell out i didn't realize i had headphone in sorry a this is an arabian friends doll so these caught my attention because if you look and you're familiar with some of the dolls that I collect, these look an awful lot like the Jockey Preciosi original run of Wings Club dolls, and indeed, they're on the same bodies and they have the same faces, it's very interesting. Um, so here's all the dolls. I believe that this specific line of dolls, it, it is made by the company New Boy, who makes full of dolls for a Middle Eastern audience, um, but I believe these dolls were released for English-speaking nations, um, for Muslim girls like um, the United Kingdom. Um, so this is the Arabian Friends dolls, and I actually ordered Muna, but the seller couldn't find Muna. Um, so he was like, can I send you Ahlam instead? And I was like, sure. <laughs> um, so he's gonna send me Muna when he finds her. He says that he has her, he just hasn't found her yet, and I said that's totally fine. I will take Ahlam, which of course means dreams, and it says dreams are like beautiful butterflies that fly in the wide blue sky. It is good to have dreams because they take you to a place where anything is possible. Um, but this is really interesting. So. I'm not sure where this was labeled for sale, to be honest with you. It's very interesting, but here's the back of the box. And this doll, he told me um, her box is very shredded, and so he didn't actually have her listed on eBay, and I was like, I actually wanted this one more, and I was hesitant to buy Muna because I really wanted multiple at once, so I'm excited that now I'm going to be getting two of them. Uh, so here she is. I'm glad the box was already semi-open because I'm definitely going to be keeping this. This is so cool. Um, so here is Ahlem. Oh, her hair is really good quality. Interesting. She is beautiful. She does have a, like, a rub on her nose that I hope will come off. Isn't she absolutely beautiful? We're going to be taking her off of her back card today and getting her out of here and letting her see the light of day. These dolls have been tough to track down. I've been trying to track down these dolls for a little over a year now and I had only found the one Muna from the one seller that I bought from. Um, I don't really think that they're like super rare or like super valuable dolls or anything, it's just that they're not being sold here and the markets that they are being sold in I'm having trouble locating. Um, so I have a feeling these are probably all over Europe and people just assume that they are bootleg Winx dolls. I don't know for sure but I am, I mean, I am pretty confident this is not a stolen face mold or anything. I'm pretty confident that they probably just used the same factory. There's lots of dolls that have used this face mold and this body mold before. Um, I believe Winx did originate it though, but um, I don't think there was any foul play involved here. I could be wrong. I have no way of knowing unless I like went to China and talked to the factory workers or talked to Jockey Preciosi. If Jockey Preciosi even owns the faces, I honestly don't know. Um, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Her clothes are very interesting. There's like a mixture of different qualities with her clothes. Oh, she's absolutely beautiful. Um, I wish we had more info on where these girls were from because um, you can definitely infer, but I would love to know their backstories. Her hair is exquisite. I'm actually really impressed. I was expecting it to be polypropylene and I believe this is like actually really high quality nylon. I just assumed um, 
based on other dolls that I've felt at this price point, the supposed price point of these dolls, I didn't think it would be this high quality of hair. She has a really adorable turtleneck top. It has a tiny peephole here. Um, it has like a faux scarf tie around the neck, which is a really interesting style that I haven't seen before. Um, she has, she, it's definitely the Winx body. It's got that hourglass going on. Um, but they've dressed it in very baggy clothes to give her a more, um, I guess a modest figure. I think that's really interesting. And they did a great job also. Um, her skirt is fantastic. It's a maxi skirt and it's a like faux denim material, a nice quality one. It's got like an acid wash to it and it has tiny little glitter dots that are meant to look like rhinestones, I assume. It looks really nice. The one piece I think that is a mess on this doll is this belt. I do not like the belt. And then the purse is real questionable too. Let me, I picked up the scissors here they are. Let me get it off of the ties to show you. I'm very impressed by this doll. Okay, let me put her down. The purse is just two pieces of a pleather just kind of glued together. And it has a surprising amount of detail to it, so it's a shame that they did that instead of... I mean, it is sewn. I'm just confused by this piece. I don't know. Maybe it's cheaper. I mean, it's it's assuredly cheaper to do it this way. I'm not a fan of this piece. I'll be putting this in a bag <laughs> and I'll give her another purse. She's just beautiful. And then her shoes remind me so much of my scene shoes. So much. And she, just like the Winx dolls, I assume, has little Barbie feet. Yeah, tiny little Barbie feet. And they have also, interestingly enough, given her a shoe that makes her feet appear bigger as well. Was that just a thing in the early 2000s? I do wholeheartedly feel that <laughs> the big feet on dolls just looks nicer and it makes the dolls stand better. So generally, I think it's better. Um, gosh, I love this blue and black hair blend. It's so pretty. And there's like tiny little braids and she has it pulled back into like a princess style. It's really pretty. Um, and then there's also this, these little cords at the bottom of the skirt to emulate a skirt that you could um, cinch in a little bit, like a drawstring. So that's really, really beautiful. This is a, this doll is better than I expected her to be. I love her. Okay, <laughs> let me set her in my lap and we're gonna get her accessories out. So first I'm a little bit curious there's not much in her box, but I'm very curious about what this is. <laughs> this is her name, Ahlam, in pretty text. I did, my favorite thing when I was learning Arabic was to just write the words out in pretty letters, but it's hard to read typed um, pretty letter Arabic because um, you usually when you're reading Arabic, you're reading either your classmates very careful handwriting or you're reading a very specific typeface of Arabic. So it's really hard to read the more calligraphy style. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, okay, so these appear to just be the blurbs from the back of the box, but this is a really neat piece. Oh no, these are different blurbs. It says, my dreams always took me far away from those around me. When I was a student, my dreams would take me high above the clouds. One day I saw a plane in the sky and I realized wanted, what I want to do is traveling from place to place. Yes, that's what I want to be, an air hostess. Flying high is my dream. Okay, and then Munna, who hopefully I will be getting soon, hers says, ever since I was young, I would get many creative ideas just by looking at a small piece of fabric, and I would be able to make a fantastic masterpiece out of it. And in the classroom, I was tempted to decorate the blackboard. My friends were impressed and started asking me to design their clothes, hats, and even their accessories. I can change anything around me to a special piece of art. A fashion designer. Yes, that's what I want to be, but in my own way, an Arabian fashion designer. They're so, this is so cute. I love this little piece. This is awesome. Um, and now I'm going to get her hijab out. So, I accidentally unwrapped the hijab. I have absolutely no idea how to tie these. So this is going to be embarrassing for me. <laughs> Sorry, I was gone for a hot minute. I was watching a lovely YouTuber explain different styles of tying hijabs. I went with this one just because it's the simple one. And I think this looks really good on her. I think it's very fitting. And this is also the way that I'm pretty sure that it was done in the box. Um, an interesting thing about these dolls, and maybe this is just me having no background on um, actually wearing these. She has so much hair and it's so thick compared to the rest of her that I can't hide it under the hijab. 
Um, and I can't find any promotional pictures of these dolls with the hijab actually on, so I'm not sure <laughs> uh, what I'm supposed to do about that, but I think she looks absolutely beautiful. I think this is a wonderful doll to exist. Um, and I'm sure these were absolutely beloved because this is seriously an incredible doll. This is definitely a gem in my collection and I'm so grateful to have her and I'm so excited um, to have her and hopefully Muna come home soon. And yeah, I've been looking forward to this day for so long. It's so crazy. I can't wait to get a hold of some Fula dolls as well um, to really, they're just dolls that really interest me. I think they're so unique and beautiful and I think they're so culturally significant and interesting and it's just to me it's one of those thought experiments you have to go through that every different country has a completely different worldview and culture and all the stores around them and all the different brands around them they're all totally different than yours there might be a few that are similar but they're all completely different like I don't to my knowledge they don't have Barbie and say um well probably they do in Dubai which is where these were definitely sold um <laughs> but like Barbie's not like the doll there. There's also full of dolls, which were really popular. They're merchandised. They're all over the place there. And that's their normal. And that's the doll that they have. And I think that's so interesting. And then in uh, Japan, we have Lika-chan. And in, uh, I said that's so Texan. <laughs> and in China, you have the Kern dolls. There's like just different dolls in each. It's just very interesting. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know how to explain how I feel about this. Um, and it's just really cool to own a piece of something that I actually have a degree and I majored in Arabic language. Anyway, um, yeah. Here's Ahlam and Brooke. <laughs> um, let me know what you guys think. And if you guys are from outside the US or probably Europe too, let me know if you guys have just a completely hidden world of dolls that are completely unknown to me. Cause I would love to hear about it. I think it's so interesting. And I'm very lucky that I was able to buy this doll from a US seller because um, a lot of Middle Eastern people who move over here want to get a hold of Fula dolls or hijabi dolls for their children. So there are people that import them specifically for that purpose. So I found a few sites for that and they do have listings for these dolls and for Fula dolls, but they're generally sold out. The vast majority of them are. And that's hard for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching for real this time. Bye.